Hey guys, this is Xavier with Gotta Be Mobile with another GBM ink show. As always, our ink shows are sponsored by Mobile Demand. They make some fantastic, rugged tablet PCs. I'm here at CES 2010 at the uh, Inrix guest suite, and most of us haven't heard of Inrix. And uh, I'm here with Scott Sedlick of Inrix, along with uh, Ken Kranzler, and they're going to explain to us what Inrix is and why you might see their technology in uh, some mobile devices in the near future. What do you guys do? Well, Inrix was spun out of Microsoft Research Labs in 2005, and over the past five years, we've become the leading provider of traffic and navigation services. We now have over 90 customers, including Ford, deploying our traffic uh, on sync with traffic directions and information on every Ford. Uh, it's distributed with TomTom, Tom, uh, Telenavi, TT Navigator, eight of the 10 top mobile applications. So we're a business-to-business -business provider of traffic information. Innovative. So to explain the problem, obviously when I'm running late to a meeting, I look up something like Google Maps and I look for the little red or yellow or green stripes on my highways. But if you're a UPS and you're guaranteeing people that you'll deliver something by 10 a.m. halfway around the world, you need something a little bit more complex than that, right? That's exactly right. And the major problem is that there's very few sensors on roads on both the highways as well as arterials and city streets. So what Inerix has done over the last five years is aggregated over 1.5 million vehicles and mobile devices that are GPS enabled. We're getting real-time information from them. These, these are super shuttles, taxis, delivery vehicles, as well as consumer vehicles and, and mobile devices. We're aggregating that information in real time and turning that into traffic information, both in North America as well as in Europe. So, so, so you're, what you're doing is, is basically the more customers you have, the more accurate the traffic data is, and everybody benefits. Uh, that's exactly right. We call it crowdsourcing. So you do crowdsourcing in the real world, uh, and it sounds like, uh, from what I've heard from the guys over at Ford, there's going to be a heck of a lot of vehicles out there with uh, Ford Sync 2.0 in uh, 2010. So you're going to have a lot more data points to rely on. Exactly right. So more, more vehicles, more mobile devices. And uh, how we're doing that, interestingly enough, is through our, our smart driver network. And it might be interesting to, to zoom in yeah, on a map this there. particular picture that shows uh, a map of North America. Every red dot on this map represents uh, one data point that we've received from a vehicle within a 15-minute window. So let's take a look at the East Coast right now. It's uh, a little past rush hour, but there's a lot of vehicles on the road nonetheless. And it just looks like a big red splotch over there. That's right. So these are live. Uh, this, this actual uh, map shows live data points within a 15-minute window that covers, uh, for example, all of I-95 from Florida all the way up through uh, 13 states or 16 states into, into Maine. And in my home state of California, we've got the most congested roads in the country down in Los Angeles, and it looks like you have data points all over the place down there. That's right. So we're getting an I-5, 405, 90, uh, and, and uh, I-10, for example. But also, uh, relative to some of the announcements we're making at CES today, uh, we're expanding our coverage onto arterials and side streets. And a big part of this is because of both the amount of data, amount of data points that we're getting from these vehicles and devices, but also some new uh, technology that we call speed waves that has allowed us to accurately uh, show and understand traffic on arterials and side streets. Now, we talked about UPS and some of your big customers like Ford, either putting these on uh, their delivery trucks and taxi cabs and whatnot, but you guys were telling me when I walked in the room that uh, average Joe iPhone user is going to sort of join your network if they download an app. Yes, so we launched uh, a consumer application for the iPhone and, and also uh, for Android called uh, Inrix Traffic. That was launched in August, and it's quickly become one of the most popular applications in the navigation category. What, we're, uh, what we announced today is Inrix Traffic Pro. It's an in-app upgrade to our application that's really designed for commuters, and Ken is going to talk about that. Yeah, sure. Um, here's a screenshot of Inrix Traffic Pro. Um, what you can see is it's focused and, and zeroed in on where we are here in Las Vegas. It knows where I am. Get a little closer to that and sure. turn down my bright lights. It leverages the GPS um, resident on the iPhone to, sh to zero in my location. And you can see it's actually taken advantage of some of the advanced uh, advancements we've made in arterials as we're showing not only highway traffic, but also traffic 
um, on side streets. So you know if your shortcut's really a shortcut or not before you take it. Yeah, it does even more than that. Actually, one of the things we're doing is not only showing traffic um, on a map, which is um, what we do really in our free application to and send people to actually provide data points back to us, but in the pro version, what we've done is created sort of the, the all-purpose the all -purpose tool for commuters. And this really gets at that point of um, what does my specific commute look like? What does my drive look like? So in, in, in addition to being able to view Can traffic in and around areas. Yeah. There we go. So in addition to be able to view traffic in and around where I am, seeing all incidents that might be here. So here's an accident up on 589 up here. I can look at the details that there's an accident up on Sahara Road. Um, and I zero in and see what's going on um, specifically in and around that accident and see if there's a delay. It actually isn't a very significant accident, so it's not causing And a I, I noticed delay. it said reported 14 minutes ago. Yeah, so, so we know exactly when it comes in and how long it's going to be active. Now, is that for. from emergency service reporting that, or is that, can a consumer report that if he wants to? Um, that's something we're going to work on in the future. Right now, we work with a partner called Clear Channel that okay. actually has operation centers in about 100 cities across the country. And they monitor police scanners, they monitor uh, departments of transportation, whatever it may be, to understand exactly um, if there are specific incidents on the roadway. And we leverage that 1.5 million vehicles that we have on the roadway to actually get the traffic flow and be able to paint these roads as we do. Um, so what we've done, especially with the Pro application, is actually enabled this little My Commute tab uh, that you see down here. And here, now I look at specific points that I've set up as interest. So I could set up work, I could set up home, I can set up an airport. And what we'll do at any point in time is show you what your commute looks like um, from where you are to that specific point. So you can see I set up two points here in Las Vegas. One is the Hilton, which is fairly close to where we are. Um, and traffic isn't that bad there, and we're pretty close to it, so it's only about a nine-minute drive. But if I wanted to go to the airport right now, uh, the traffic out on the strip right now is pretty bad. Um, so there's actually significant traffic out there, and we understand <clears throat> what that traffic looks like. So it's normally probably a, a five or 10 minute drive. Right now it's gonna take me 20, 25 minutes, and I can see that very quickly at a glance and understand what my commutes look like. I can look at it now, and I can actually, with this slider up here, I can actually start to forecast what these commutes will look like ah. if I waited. So right now it's four o'clock. Yeah, so right now it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's about a couple minutes before four o'clock, and I can see it's gonna take me 25 minutes. And so, if we wanna offset that by 15 minutes? Yeah, so if I wanted to wait, so if I said, let me wait until 3.15, Oh, that's um, we'll going go back in time. Yeah. Uh, 3.45, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. So let's go to 4.15. Let's go to 4.15. It hasn't updated in a while. So if I wait until 4.15, we're going to go recalculate what the traffic conditions are based on our predictive. I can see that it's actually going to get a little bit better. Oh, okay. So the traffic's going to clear up between now and 4.15. So it's basically getting there, us there at the same time if we leave now versus waiting 15 minutes. That's right. And yeah. this is based on, what, historical data? There's or? a couple of things we do. We actually have some um, patented algorithms we use to actually predict traffic conditions. So we look at current traffic conditions, we look at um, incidents that may be available, as well as factors that might impact uh, traffic, with CES being one of those, a convention or, or significant, and start to predict the patterns of what the impact that will have on traffic conditions. So if the uh, 49ers and Raiders both have a home game, in the Bay Area. You can bet we'll predict some more significant traffic um, when, when, when those things are happening. So we leverage some of that to actually make, not only do leverage historical traffic, but actually look so at it's a little, it's proactive versus it sounds like the app that comes on the iPhone is reactive, trying to figure out, that's oh my right. God, the, thing, the highway's clogged, let's that's report right. it now. Yeah, so by and large, that's gonna use a lot of historical traffic, which looks typically at what, you know, a four o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon would look like. We actually know specifically what's going on now and can actually make forecasts and predictions based on the conditions that we have going on now, as well as information about the roadways. So how do people get their hands on this app? Is it in that iTunes store now? Yeah, so this is available in the iTunes store now. What you can do is download the free application, and then actually what we've done is leverage some of the advances that Apple has made within app upgrades. So you actually just get download the free application, start to use it, and when you want to start using this cool commuter functionality to understand what your commutes look like and how those will evolve, you just click on the upgrade, um, and for about 10 bucks a year, you'll have access to as many commutes as you want, be able to save points, save routes. You can actually even record a specific route. So if you have that uh, special back road that you can use, we actually allow you to huh. uh, record that specific so route. So most g navigation devices, they, you can say avoid a road or avoid bridges or avoid right. freeways, but you actually will uh, just follow somebody around. Yeah, yeah. so here's, here's actually what it would look like. So I go in my car, um, I hit this point, and then I basically click the recorder route functionality. 
If we were, in a, if, if we were moving around, um, this thing would start following me and it would actually record that special route. If I have a special way from work to home or home to work or to the airport, it can actually allow me to compare how the normal route might take versus my special route, um, the ideal tool for that commuter that has lots of different ways that they do. Particularly what we're trying to do is provide them the information they need be able to make the smart decisions. And you're still getting something back to sell on to your corporate customers. You got it. Yeah, because while they're driving, they're providing information back to us about what the traffic conditions look like. Well, great. So look for uh, Inrix Pro in the App Store. And the, the, I assume the uh, Android version looks fairly similar to pretty, this. Pretty much the same thing. Great. Thanks for your time, guys. Thank you.